customary. Greetings, I'm Rob Chapman. And I'm the captain. We're at Anderton's.co.uk in Guildford. What does the .co bit mean? It means company. We're a company? Yes. In the UK. In the UK. In Guildford. In the capital of England, Guildford. Absolutely. <laughs> The sex capital. <laughs> I mean, probably isn't that. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. So, uh, for this video, we're just going to really talk about what it means when you see in the description of a Fender guitar the three letters FSR. Uh, and I think, just for fun, in the comment section below, you yeah, can what now do you type think it means? <laughs> the acronym. What you think the acronym is, which Rob said, uh, "Effing stupid retailers," is p potentially one. It could be, but it's not. Um, it stands for Fender Special Run. Yes. So it's a special run. It's a, it's a clever way of saying limited edition in case you sell loads and you want to keep making them. Exactly that. So, I mean, most brands have what they would rather unromantically describe as their catalogue models. In other words, their sort of core range. These are guitars that are going to be produced for, uh, you know, many, many times over during their lifetime uh, with no commitment from the, the brand to sort of limit the numbers or anything like that. Um, and Fender call their limited runs FSR. And normally what happens is it'll be a meeting of all the different luth <coughs> luthiers and guitar designers and listening to customer feedback. And someone would go, do you think it'd be cool to kind of do this, this change to the spec or the color or whatever. And everybody around the table, they'd be like, mm, some people would say yes, some people would say no, but they'd go, I tell you what, let's just do it as a special run and see how it goes. Uh, and that's kind of what these four guitars here are and what many other guitars are in the catalog. So if you, if you ever come to the Anderton's website and you want to see something a bit different, if you just type Fender FSR into the search box, you'll see whatever the current range. I think right now there's about 15 or 20 different FSR models on the Anderton's website. Do you get website. all sorts of beautifully cool things like bird's eye maple necks yeah. and sort of, you know, P90s and yeah. interesting woods and colours and, you know, FSRs feels. can be on Squires, they can be on lower end Fenders, they can be on <coughs> American. American fenders, you know, it's it's there's, there's no real rhyme or reason to it. It just is. start, Rob, with that beautiful Lake Placid blue Telecaster that you're holding. I'd love to see Lake Placid because if it looks like this, then there's something wrong with it. And it would be an interesting yes. experience to go um, there and go, or huh. uh, I'm, in the, I'm in the front of Richie Cotton right now. So certainly not Flaccid. The RK50 is one of the best victory amps I've heard. And uh, I'm really enjoying playing these beautiful guitars. Do you want me to talk you through the spec? Talk me through the spec, Lee. Okay. So What's this bit? It's classic series Mexican. Um, maple neck with a, a, a lacquer on it. It's a polyurethane lacquer. It's not one of the nitro guitars. 7.25 inch radius. What is right. that? What does that? Tell us how that makes if it If you feel. had a, a, a circle. Yes. And you, you had a compass that was big enough and you put it in the middle and then you went to the edge and then you, Pythagoras steps in and says, well, you know, you could... I can't do a Greek accent. <laughs> no, there's a, well, you know, well, it you could know, be you, like, I don't know what that is. Describe a, then, this, we just this is the outside curved, of, this, less imagine flat, a ball, curvy. imagine a, a ball, <laughs> and this is the outside of the ball, and it carries on, like, all the way around. I've heard better descriptions. A ball. So, in the olden days, in vintage <laughs> Fender days, um, fretboards had a very heavy curve in them. Heavy um, curve. I guess because people decided that it, it sort of, um, uh, made it more comfortable to play chords and stuff like that. But anyway, heavy curve. And uh, as people went up to the sort of the dusty end of the neck and began bending strings and playing like that. Here we go. Yeah, people began to realize that the heavy curve on a fretboard meant that you couldn't have kind of go, terribly low without Wah! choking the strings. So modern guitars have kind of tended to go flatter on the fretboards, but this is a vintage reissue. So it's got a, a heavy curve on the fretboard. Uh, C-shape profile on the back though, so relatively thin. P90 pickup in the neck, 
Uh, Here? An American 58 vintage uh, single coil in the bridge with an American uh, vintage style bridge too. Definitely made in America then. Very cool tortoiseshell or imitation tortoiseshell. And then a Lacquet like Placide Blue, uh, which is kind of very slightly sparkly. Yes. And, um, and a tweed cool. hard case yes. to boot. Vintage now, machines, give us some tones. Well, Rob. before I do the tones, and mm. I, I will give you tones, viewers, don't worry. Um, if you wanted to adjust the truss rod on this guitar, what have you got to do, Lee? Uh, you have got to get in a time machine, go back to the 1950s, uh, take the neck off, uh, guess at how much kind of neck relief it probably would need, put it back on, hope that you were in the right ballpark, and then onwards and upwards. But yes, what I'm essentially saying is You that can't adjust it up here. There's nothing down here to adjust it. You've got to take the neck off. Yeah, the, the truss rod adjustment is underneath the scratch plate here. It's a it's a bit of a bugger, and these you, old fashioned e guitars. Yeah, so if you were going to get one of these and then put, you know, 11s on it and try and do a bit of Stevie Ray, yeah. what's his name? But, you know, I mean, it's not a, it's just one of the many things that has changed in guitar building. Easier access truss rod adjustment. Do you know why? I'm just going to go. So it wasn't until the 1970s, I think that brands like uh, Martin were even putting adjustable truss rods in their guitars sure. at all. Yeah. Because the, the general consensus was, if you bought your guitar and then stayed in the general vicinity, like of the, the climate that you that you lived in, you know, the, the neck would never really move. And it was only as people started, you know, put it, uh, traveling and going through different uh, climates and humidities and stuff like that, that manufacturers started going, oh, the necks, are, you know, we really need to make these adjustable so that users can can adjust it. And I guess changing strings and stuff like that. So there we are. That's one of the reasons, I guess, where, you know, back in the day, it wouldn't have been a big deal that you couldn't adjust the truss no. rod because it would have just been sort of done once when you bought the guitar and then... Yeah. So let's afflict that, that general concept upon the people now. So that's, uh, that's about 750 pounds. If you want to know more about that, I'll put a link in the description below. Should have said, on the floor, I've yes. stolen Lee's plimsoll. Were you using that for that last little riff? For the very last sounded... little bit of Widdly Diddly I put on the plimsoll. Oh, that sounded great. And I've man. also got a uni vibe that I'll be using in the jam and some other stuff too. <laughs> is now made in America, so this is a little bit more money. Uh, and this is an, uh, this was pretty obvious that this is an FSR, I think, because you're not gonna see many guitars with a lump of wood like this. Uh, and this is a Telecaster made of Malaysian blackwood. Uh, no idea why it's called blackwood, uh, because obviously it's not very black in this bit here, but it is what it is. Um, we've got two P90s on it and a more modern radius on the fretboard. So we've got nine and a half inch radius, so it feels a little flat to play. There's no lacquer on the neck, it's just a, a satin finish. Oh, I tell a lie, it's lacquered fretboard, but satin finish on the back. So I think that's what they're doing on the current American Pro series. Now this one is definitely 
mine and the this captain's favourite favorite of, of the this, range. This here. was our favourite. So again, what else we got here? We got um, brass saddles. Apologies, I'm reading this off of my phone at the moment. Uh, it's mainly, to be totally honest with you, it's mainly the fact that it's two P90s and this unusual wood that they've used. It just sounds great. Well, that it plays really well. It does play nice as well. So. <laughs> I'm using an Ignator Tweaker, the little relatively affordable 15 watt one, yeah, Ignator Tweaker, which uh, I've used a couple of times in the last six months or so and I've always enjoyed the tones of this, so. Because it's P90, still stays in that sort of Telecaster vein, but it's not as as uh, bright and piercing as a Telecaster, which I think that's why I like it. It's the yeah. one thing that I always find with a Telecaster that I'm sort of like, sometimes I find it takes your head off a bit. I also um, really, really like the scratch plate being sort of matte. Is it, There's something about it that really works with I the look. I think it's anodized metal, right. which, which is why it's got that slight sort of, um, like you get on brushed steel, you know, you've got that right. very slight sort of grain on it. It's a nice piece of maple, you know, nice nice maple neck. It's got a little bit of figuring in it. Um, Why don't you step on that Charlie, bro? Well, I've got a Klon here, a Klon KTR, which is one of the more affordable ones, which sounds great. <laughs> So this will set you back a little bit more money than uh, that one. This is £1,800. Again, American made with a hard case. Just more modern features, really. The, the truss rod thing that we were complaining about on the blue one that Rob's got is solved by making it adjustable from the, the top here. I Again, mean, it's worth every single it's, dollar. It's interesting. You can, if you can zoom in on two headstocks side by side, these are, these are little, you know, you can see the evolution of how you get round things like the string tree. So on a, on a Fender Telecaster, because the headstock is in a straight line rather than angled backwards, you have a bit of a problem with the, the, um, the top two strings here. They, they kind of, they, they're not, uh, there's not enough tension over the nut to stop them popping out. So that's why the string tree was invented. In the olden days, it was literally just a metal washer, really, that just used yeah. to, you just used to slide the strings under. And you can kind of see that it's, it's not exactly a frictionless invention, this. So modern string trees now are effectively do the same job, but in a frictionless way by having these nice kind of tooled little sort of pins, if you like, that the strings go under. So I'd like to own that guitar. It is very pretty, the really unusual. Looks, it kind of looks like a go faster stripe through the middle, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and the fretboard looks like when you look out of an airplane flying on the way I to should America. Say, I should say, actually, I've, of course, I'm being a bit of a donut here. <coughs> um, it's clearly not a solid piece of whatever the wood is on the top, otherwise you'd see that stripe going through it. In fact, you can see it's about a, a sort of two millimeter thick top. So what is the actual body on this then? Um, okay, it's an older body, and the the, the Malaysian blackwood is just the, the sort of the bit that you see on the top. one Rob uh, <clears throat> it's a veritable poem of maple and mahogany and hollow bodiness come in uh, noiseless fender single call in the bridge and then the neck it's this dirty little what would you call that I call it a pickup but that is a uh, is it the fender wide range single coil is that what they call so it so yeah it's it's a, it's called a wide range i think i call it a I'm staggered p90 up. but i suppose uh, it's, probably... it's not a p90 no no but I just, um, that's what i call it and uh, you can adjust you Mandy. can adjust that's the not neck. his name but that's what i call him you can adjust the neck here where they've got a rotary beautiful beautiful neck i know pete's got a wicked looking shot of this there's one. a story about the mahogany isn't there on these guitars is there yes they're rescued don't forget of course which hurricane was it? Hurricane Mitch. So um, we're presuming 
that the wood was rescued from either houses or trees that were, that were thrown down. Know. But apparently in, in Honduras, is it Honduras? Is that the right country? Honduras? It's, it's rescued Honduran mahogany from uh, Hurricane Mitch. Yeah. Um, so I suppose so. something good from something bad, I mean, something horrific became something mildly yes. okay. I don't know. I, how, no, I, do know how'd you put I don't that? remember Hurricane Mitch. Was that was there was there was it terribly devastating lots of dead people? I, don't I mean know. if they rescued wood from it I'm going to say probably it was a horrendous thing. Yeah. I've never been in a hurricane. I don't ever want to be. I was in the Caribbean once uh, where we had the tail end of uh oh, I can't, do you know what? I can't remember what it was, but it it was unbelievable like proper palm trees leaning over hotel gets evacuated oh. into the emergency basement thing. Um yeah. Although the crazy thing is, uh, how fast it, it's like one day you're going, oh my God, the whole island's going to be destroyed. And then the next day you're going, that's oh, quite nice. We just sit on the beach. <laughs> it's bizarre. I suppose that's what happens when winds move at like a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> They've gone fairly fast. I've got a story about a horrible uh, thing, but it's it's like a five minute story. So probably not I appropriate. Do it. Then no. we'll see which bits make it in. <sighs> so I was teaching guitar to this, this lovely family. That's a horrible story. Let's not go there. Two kids and a oh, dad. Terrible, poor kids. And uh, they went a whole day to, to an island and there was a tidal wave. Oh, no. And they were in a hut on the beach. Yeah. Are we talking about this one that happened in Thailand, like yeah. uh, on yeah. New Year's Day or Christmas And Eve all of a sudden the water rushes into this hut and, and they're like, oh my God, what's going on? And they're, they're swept up and up and up and up and they're floating and they hit the roof. Water fills the roof. They all, they all think they're going to die. He's holding the kids' hands. We're just going to die. Mum's gone off shopping up the hill. And just as they're about to run out of breath, the roof lifts off the hut and they're carried away down shore and they're safe. And they end up on some shore and the water's gone by and dissipated and all the rubble's gone past them. And they, they couldn't believe... This is absolutely God's honest truth. They you couldn't believe... Have you seen that, uh, Ewan McGregor, Nicole Kidman film about that? No. Unbelievable. No. Film. But anyway, so they're like, well, we're safe, which is a miracle. Yeah. If you're ever going to describe a miracle, that's a miracle. But where's where's mum? Because she'd gone off to town shopping, and town was like hills. It could be flat or it could be high. And then uh, three days later, they found her, and she was fine. And she'd been trying to find them, and they were all alive. I, I know that if we're talking about the one that happened in Thailand, my dad uh, and stepmum were on holiday in Thailand uh, and supposed to be it on uh, one of the islands that was decimated or not, right. you know, hit badly. And I'm sure it was New Year's Day, uh, not New Year's Day, I'm sure it was Boxing Day that it happened. Because I remember waking up, the news being on and thinking, Dad's out there, trying to phone him, going, you know, da da da. Yeah. Couldn't get through. Eventually that night, <clears throat> managing to speak to him, and he went, oh no, no, don't worry, literally at the last minute, they had two weeks booked in Thailand. They were doing a week in Bangkok and a week by the coast. And they should have been at the coast. And he said, just literally at the last minute, must be, this is fate. They just went, oh, we switched it round. We, 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 did oh. the, we did the week in Bangkok the other way around. So I'm wow. like, but I literally spent the whole of uh, Boxing Day that year trying right. to get my dad on his phone to go, are you still alive? But yes, that was uh, heavy. Well, on man. that note. Wow. On a brighter note. Yeah, absolutely, Let man. me give you some Every, tones. Literally, do you know what the cool thing is? The internet world just probably just went really quiet for about yeah, two did, minutes. Yeah, didn't know Everyone, <laughs> Oh my God. They probably went from trolling comments. Rob's hair looks stupid. <laughs> Lee's too tired to... Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, Why can't Lee just play all the same, different licks apart from the same one? Oh no, now they're talking about something serious. People yeah. died. Um, anyway. Back to it. So back to uh, Hurricane Mitch <laughs> and making guitars. Uh, uh, this FSR, you were telling us... Um, so it's another modern one, basically, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Reclaim Wood from the Hurricane. It's got locking tuners, which is great. Oh, yeah, I like it. It's really you lightweight. Like it, like it. It's uh, se you know, semi hollow it's got a central <laughs> block. You've uh, got the suspension bridge on there, haven't you? Which yeah. Is, which is which is kind of new for the elite range from about a year or two ago. Yeah. But you know, if you take all the strings off that, the bridge just comes out. It's yeah. Just it's only held on by, you know, the strings. Love. And being, yeah, and love. Yeah. And high winds. It's the only thing <laughs> right, okay. keeping it in. <laughs> by the way, is called a Shawbucker 1T. Really? Uh, and that's by Tim Shaw is the guy that makes the Shawbucker and... Um... Let's check it out. It's 
I that sure that is sound. a rocking. Anyway, um, now, the back of the neck is carved a little bit differently on this one. Tell us about that, Robert. It's like when you... Now, the back of the neck is uh, slightly <laughs> differently carved on this. <laughs> Tell us about that, Rob. <laughs> so, if you put your hand here, it's a bit chunky C-shape. It feels the same to me. And when you get down here, it's a D-shape, but slimmer. Why? Well, this is, um, you Wiley. guys have probably heard of, uh, of, of, people have been doing compound radius fretboards for years. And this is where, again, the, the idea is you, you have a little bit more of a, uh, a curve in the neck where you're playing the chords and it gets a bit flatter up here and it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. And so Fender on the Elite Series took that kind of like a step further and said, well, what if we kind of compound radius the back of the, or no, not, not compound radius, sorry. What if we sort of compound carve the back of the neck, so the type of um, very comfortable C-shape uh, vibe down here um, alters to a D-shape, so a little bit flatter uh, as you go up the neck. So, I mean, really, I'll, I'll be totally honest with you, and I think Rob's feeling the same, but it's not as obvious a change as the change to the fretboard is. I think you could quite easily play this guitar and not even really realise what Fender has done. No. But but it, but it is what it is. But it is what it is. And it is comfy to play. And it's a really rock, and despite the fact that it's a hollow body kind of yeah. classic looking instrument, it. It, if you step on it, it's a, it's a rocking machine. <laughs> Being American is going to cost you about eighteen hundred pounds, and again, there's links below. That's the S1 switching. It's really a, a like a, a sexy looking Elite Strat, isn't it? But Elite Telly. Sorry. Should we play it without and with? So. <laughs> S1 switching, go and, go and watch the videos that we've done on the Elite Series Strats and Tellies if you want to know more about S1. By no means last of all FSRs, as I said before, there's, there's uh, always 10 or 20 different FSRs on the Anderson's website if you want to go and have a look at them. Uh, but this is a roasted ash guitar. No, I never roasted ash before. I've roasted a turkey and the odd chicken, but I've <coughs> never roasted ash before. But mm. apparently this is what happens. It's very lightweight, really nice and lightweight. Uh, it's got, no, it's uh, got like that open grain finish on the wood, which I've always really liked. Kind of gives it that sort of very fashion reclaimed vibe, but I, do, I don't believe this is a reclaimed one. Roasted ash body, but with a roasted maple neck. So it's a pretty traditional uh, Strat construction. Uh, it's got vintage American pickups in there, a V-shape neck profile, which again, I always, I've tried loads of different guitars. Some have a very pronounced V, you can really feel the ridge on the back and others, it says it's a V-shape in the spec, and then you go, is it, doesn't it? It feels very subtle, and this is one of those more subtle ones. From a guitar company um, point of view, I'm quite surprised and, and also quite um, amazed that they managed to match the color of the body to the neck with them being two different species. Well, I'm guessing that's because it was uh, Gas Mark IV for exactly 53 minutes, right. and, uh, and that's what <laughs> happens. Um, so yeah, vintage 56 pickups, uh, vintage trim system, black pick guard, and this particular FSR is available in a Telecaster and a, a jazz bass as well, I think. Is it a jazz but again, you can't bass, adjust the truss unless you take the neck off, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. That's another good point. In fact, in fact, on what you can see on the Stratton oh, caster, hole. if you zoom in, which one shall I go? Shall I go camera one, camera six, camera nine, camera one. There aren't really nine cameras, there's 11. Um, can you see just here, you can just about see the, um, <coughs> the sort of cross-headed uh, nut 
that uh, that you would need to get to to adjust it. Uh, it's nice, really lightweight, really, really lightweight. This was probably my second favorite. Well, I say my second favorite. I'm a Strat sucker, so it's kind of like. I'm That's no pedals, a little bit of pedalage here. So I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, and that, if you fancy one of these guitars, is about 1,700 pounds. I'm probably with you. I think that's my favourite in all departments. It plays yeah. the best. It looks cool. It's but, uh, it's a really great guitar. Oh, I say that in terms of looks. I've got to be honest with you. Lake Placid Blue with a tortoiseshell pick guard. Uh, there is a T-shirt on the Andertons website which you can buy with a blue tortoise on the front of it. Entirely inspired because I once said in a video that my favourite guitars were blue guitars with tortoiseshells pick guards and then I think we said something like wouldn't it be funny if you saw a blue tortoise and then one of our web team went oh I made a t-shirt with a blue tortoise on it anyway and that was his voice it was um so there we are look that's it that's Fender FSR Fender special run uh said there's loads of different ones in stock so go and have a look but it's great for somebody that just wants uh, a little bit of a left field take on a classic guitar left field was that Wigfield's sister absolutely yeah and right field that was uh her brother that was her brother I've been um, Rob Chapman. Okay, I've been the captain. <laughs> See you later. Bye. <clears throat> hey everybody, thanks for watching the Andertons Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.